Hey everybody, um, this is one of the most fun and interesting discussions um, that I've ever had on not only farming but how the earth is working spiritually. Um, I've been working on this um, for quite a number of years now, trying to understand both the North Pole and the South Pole and basically everything on our planet. Um, and it has been very interesting. Um, so one of the more interesting areas um, to discuss is basically Central America and the Caribbean. So when you think about Earth, um, how does it work? Um, how does all these uh, land masses kind of work together? Um, Central America uh, and the Caribbean is actually in between uh, the Northern Hemisphere and the South Southern Hemisphere. Primarily uh, the equator is actually here, um, so it's actually a little more on the Northern Hemisphere, but um, it does connect uh, North America and South America, and then even Antarctica to the pole here. So. Uh, the question is, is that what's going on here? Um, how can we understand our planet and our universe? So I have to say, I was super excited about this presentation and now I'm kind of like standing back from it and just like, whoa, um, how can I even say anything about this topic of spirituality and the universe and our planet? So, um, it's just kind of, um, I don't even know what to say. There's just so much to say. Um, and I certainly hope um, that uh, what you're thinking about, I just saw a friend of mine uh, say something here, but what you're thinking about um, is super important as well. So, um, you know, Africa here um, and the rest of the earth um, is a huge part of what's going on. And we're just talking about Central America. Um, I'd love to get into all the details. Um, try to help you solve your problems wherever you are um, and um, look at the earth here. So we're gonna try to look at the earth together and see what's going on, particularly with farming. So sorry, I just need to take a breath here because it's kind of an emergency. Um, I'm gonna be working on another topic uh, related to food, uh, teeth and health of teeth soon, as soon as possible. I have some friends that are screaming in pain right now. Uh, every night because of their teeth. So I want to get to that topic as soon as possible, but there is even people without food. So um, we want to look carefully at the food situation uh, in Central America here um, because it's so close to the equator and it's actually similar um, to uh, most people live near the equator, believe it or not. Um, and um, so the food situation is very important. So sorry, I'm just trying to catch a breath here. Um, and talk with you a little bit. So before we get into the details of um, things, I've added a climate map here and I wanted to talk um, specifically about the spirituality of the planet. So, and kind of how I got started on all this uh, stuff. Um, so, you know, no matter what your situation is, how bad or how good the situation is, um, try to think about the entire universe and how we fit into that spiritually and basically what happened is I got very stressed and wanted to study earth because I was like how does this all work so I got to the poles and I noticed that Antarctica looks like a brain um, and it's very important because it's on the pole so like our heads are on one side of our body um, for instance um, and so it's also um, kind of started to make sense because the electromagnetic fields and the aurora coming off of the south pole and the north pole um started to make some sense to me that that would be how the planet potentially would or at least one of the ways there's many ways earthquakes lightning weather electromagnetic storms all kinds of things um going on on a planet so but basically i noticed that antarctica looks like a brain uh, kind of a cross section so that really changed my life um, and started to make me think about the planet in terms of a living, um, not necessarily living, but, um, and the reason I say that is because there's so much more to the universe um, than what we think. So that's why I'm a little scared to even talk about this topic. Um, I try to study as much as possible, but there's a lot more to study too. So let's jump right into the food situation. Um, so we are currently in a state where we don't have enough food on our planet. We, we do have enough food, but 
we're not actually distributing it correctly and we're not consuming it we're actually wasting about 30 percent of our food and believe it or not central america i was trying to eat some food just before i gave this presentation because i was very hungry and was stressed about some things i had some bananas and some fruit smoothie just to kind of think about um you know a lot of the bananas come from ecuador um and this region so i wanted to think about that um carefully before this presentation in terms of actually eating some food from this region so i can't emphasize enough um you know there's so many things i want to talk about but you know I, in terms of the uh astrophysics of what's going on because someday we'll probably have to live on another planet in our solar system or maybe a moon is maybe even more likely um because of the ice situation on some moons there's actually quite a lot of water so um how we think about um farming on the poles is actually super important it's very cold in outer space um it's unbelievably cold and it can be unbelievably warm at the same time uh depending on if you're with the sun or not um, there's also a lot of radiation and other problems i was one of my friends that studied aerospace told me you can die within i don't know seconds or minutes from the radiation in outer space so that's unbelievable um but um there's a lot of radiation near the equator as well because of the sun um so it gets quite hot um even florida we think is warm but there's actually quite a bit more south that we can go to get to the equator which is actually right in here. So um, as we think about farming, um, there's a problem because um, it can be too hot um, like it is in Africa in some areas, like the desert here, um, and without any rain. And then there's also the problem of fresh water and salt water. Um, and you can kind of see that these islands uh, are super important because each one of them are kind of like a little habitat for a farm. Um, you know, you have to be pretty sustainable on, a, on an island so central america basically connects uh north america and south america and we depend on north america depends on mexico in the winter time for food you can see it gets too cold up here in chicago um to grow food for a significant amount of months um you know even half the year you're not even really farming so um a little bit less than half a year but anyway so question is how do we get our food and we actually depend on central america um and even the bananas that i ate were all the way down here so that's many thousands of miles I had to travel just so that we could eat food and um anyway i need to hold on a second so i'd like to make this as practical as possible there are people that really need food right now um this instant um and uh believe it or not uh some of those places are where you wouldn't expect like they should have food um near the equator for example in africa and other areas but yet they don't have food so it's really a question of what's going on um i want to talk about some spiritual stuff a little bit later in this discussion about how the north pole is connected to the south pole and maybe we even have um three regions that look like a brain um on this map so you can see um definitely south south america looks a little bit like like uh, antarctica and then you can even argue that south america looks a little bit like north america and then there's almost three different sections so you can have a north pole center and south pole so north south and equator so something to think about in terms of what's going on um, but we're basically talking about a piece of the puzzle that connects this north part to the equator and there's also another section in here that we can uh discuss um but uh, really, we need food, um, and we need to talk about it. So I came across this map. Um, this is a global map. Um, I can zoom out, um, which I'll do in a second here. So here is the global map, and you can basically see um, there's not a whole lot of farming, believe it or not, here in the Caribbean or even in Southeast Asia. Uh, a lot of farming, almost all of India is farmland now, and then a significant part of where china here and it's you know vast desert out here out west so there's not really much farming opportunities here so um but i wanted to look specifically at central america so we wanted to compare first what's going on here so kind of an overview of what's going on um so you can see these blue areas um are actually definitely considered farming areas um these red and yellow are kind of susceptible areas so there's actually a debate even with the environment um and whether or not 
um, there's actually uh, what kind of farming is going on there. So, uh, but you can see in Cuba, there's quite a lot of farms here and then right along the coast of Mexico and then definitely right in here and then actually uh, Guadalajara and some other areas. And so sorry, I'm just trying to catch my breath here to discuss all this because there's just so much to discuss in terms of farming. Um, but what I wanted to emphasize is the importance of one spec here. So actually it looks like there's not too many farms in Mexico relative to the United States, but each of these farms are extremely important um, to uh, feeding people. So um, it's really surprising how much we depend on Mexico. Uh, I was mentioning, you know, as much as 50% of our food in the wintertime might even come from Mexico if we go to fresh produce. Um, so for example, you know, fruits, vegetables, all that, either grown in California or Mexico. So almost all of it, right? So um, that's super important piece of the puzzle. And yet you can see on the map, we have way more farming up here in North America, but the problem is the diversity. So there's actually not a lot of rain up in here compared to down south in the Mexico uh, and the um, right along the coast of the ocean, there's gonna be more clouds and water and rain. So this is mostly soybeans and corn get a little more diversity as you head down here and then there's actually some sugar cane um, so we start to get some of the similar <clears throat> areas down in Florida but you can see a lot of that is swamp actually and not even farmable or even national park um, so so I'm sorry I'm just really tired about <laughs> explaining all these I've been going through the whole entire earth um, and trying to make it as exciting and interesting as possible but there's just so much information here so um, you know, kind of what happened here is I was trying to find farms to work with. Um, so, uh, you know, I had to use the river maps because um, it's kind of hard to see here on the river maps or even on the satellite imagery. So I had to actually load up a specific river map and you can see there's not a whole lot of rivers, big rivers um, on the islands. But the rivers are still pretty important. I think we can zoom in and maybe start to see some rivers, but I well, only get one right there, right? So um, it's really hard to see, but Essentially, uh, the irrigation is very important, and even um, in an area where you get a lot of water and rain, uh, you still kind of need to do irrigation every day. You know, you should be watering your plants, so that doesn't doesn't rain every day almost anywhere in the world. Um, so uh, that's a very important consideration um, because you got to water your plants every day. So. You can see in Mexico, some of that farming region up in here actually has some river regions, and then you got quite a number of rivers kind of heading off here, and then you got this river here, and then you can see some in South America. So one of the interesting things in terms of spiritually uh, that I wanted to think about is how North America and South America connected. So you basically have this little area of Panama where you have quite a lot of shipping uh, done through there, and I got this grass, you can kind of see all the shipping going through Panama Canal and how that kind of relates to other areas. So 90% of the food or natural resources on our planet in general um, are shipped of some sort um, by truck or by boat. And actually a lot of that is by boat. So you can see all these interconnections in how complicated it is. Um, it gets even more complicated in Southeast Asia and other areas, but this is a very interesting area for um, North America and South America to look at. So let's look at what actually is being produced here in Central America. So I didn't really do Caribbean, but you see Central America, actually beer being the number one export. So that's kind of scary, um, meaning not even food. Then you have avocados, pineapples, mangoes, bananas being huge and other vegetables. So even though beer is big here, um, even in the United States, it's kind of shameful because uh, you know, we don't really have a lot of vegetables and fruits, but you can see right here, we have almost 15% or 20% uh, being uh, food. But then you got alcohol again showing up here with a good 10% uh, and then fresh fruit again or 5%. So you got coffee here, beef and other products, tomatoes being huge as well. So this can kind of give you an idea. Um, it's nice to see the exports, this is all exports. So you gotta switch to agriculture and you can see Central America is basically, America is very dependent on Central America, right? So it's the number one exporter there. 
Um, and then you can see agriculture, again, America being huge. So they're actually exporting a lot of that food to America. And then global share, you can see what's going on in Central America. So actually, this is one of the only regions where you have it going up. You can see it's uh, going up here. Agriculture and everything else is going down. But you can see um, there is kind of even machinery is heading up too, but there's a little downtick there recently. So actually, agriculture is huge on Central America. So I want to do a couple things that you might want to try if you're looking for farming, whether it's in Africa, Europe, um, Asia, or wherever on these maps. This is the website here. You can grab this data, um, and it's definitely worthwhile changing the opacity. So look at this area right here. Let's start with this because this is a big chunk in Mexico, right? So you can see um, basically right in here is probably one of that major areas and then you can see right on the border there's also a major area there right between mexico and texas um so that's important and you can also see some of the population with the white area is housing um green is primarily farmland so that's one way to do it um i also recommend grabbing this population map and you can start to see where the population is all around the region now if i put it full blast you can start to see those blue areas and actually it's quite a lot right especially right in here you can see down in guatemala and honduras um, i mean where is the farmland right and there's just a lot of people so some of this is getting to be quite pretty questionable in terms of sustainability in terms of population plus farming so um, that area is a big concern and even in Venezuela we're starting to have a lot of problems right so you see Caracas and along the coast here I'll turn that up so you can see right and that's all on the Andes mountain range and you can see they're probably farming it right in Lake Maracibo bringing that over to Caracas right so those farms are very vital and this is a very interesting area to look at so you can do that pretty much everywhere um, and uh, Let's look at this map really quickly just to give you some ideas. So this is a very important map too because it's kind of got just the farmland listed. It doesn't show the other areas unfortunately, but you can start to see how important Cuba is, especially on this map, which I like. So you can see Cuba is huge for farming and actually Dominican Republic is less than Haiti. So Haiti has a lot of farming as well. And then you can see down along here and then the whole coast of Mexico and um, now here is the crop calendar for central america mexico and the caribbean so you can start to see because you're just north of the equator it's still going to be on the april side so you see planting on the april side for the most part um let's look at dominican republic um here let's even try to, let's just go right to mexico because that's probably the main one we should be looking at so mexico has quite a lot of different variety of crops here you can see they have a summer season a winter season first season second season a lot of different seasons so may and april so you have pretty much it going year round right except for maybe march there's a light slight sliver there but um, this is a growing season. I'm sorry, actually it's a year round here, it looks like almost, right? So uh, uh, so let's look at wheat. Oh, where's wheat here? So wheat is perhaps one of the more important ones. So um, you can see starting in November, right? And then uh, growing and then harvesting. So quite a lot of time on the planting side, quite a lot of time on the harvesting side. Rice is also extremely important, kind of the same schedule little bit longer on the harvesting side on to september so uh you should definitely look at all these countries um, no matter where you're at um, i'm trying to start doing some more planting and growing and harvesting um but again i can't stress the importance of watering your plants every day so that's a big issue so let's look at the soil map really quick so i'm sorry i have to pause this so much i'm kind of in a rush to get to the discussion on teeth um, for my friends, uh, there's really struggling on their teeth. So I really wanted to try to look at that really carefully. It's kind of scary. I already started looking at it, but soil is super important. You can see 
um, some of this is actually pretty complicated right along the coast here you have a mountain range you can see this is actually mountain range in this red region so you can't farm there um, but the soil is pretty good along most of these coastlines here you can see it kind of purplish uh, being like in Florida so that's actually pretty good farmland as well and you can see the orange being very good farmland as well but this is kind of a slightly different shade of orange in the Amazon but you want to be careful because uh, you know there's wildlife right in here that we got to be careful and actually um, this is a very hot topic I'm gonna pause this for a second so sorry I need to catch my breath but I'm trying to think also about food for the wildlife and basically up in these mountain ranges you have one of the most this is the only region on earth that you have you don't have this in africa you don't have this anywhere else um, where you have these really high mountains so you got snow and then you got jungle right next to it so the wildlife you get all kinds of wildlife you got cold animals warm medium very warm because you're right near the equator this is warmer than florida right so this is florida up here and the equator is still down here so this is a very important habitat and actually right in here is a national park so some of this area absolutely should never be farmed um, and even near bogota is questionable right especially on this side of the mountain range probably should never have farming so um it's just the only habitat that's available for such a wide species of animals um, that need cold weather dry weather wet weather all kinds of weather so Basically, this is really cautious, actually, even in Mexico and all on the mountain range here. Uh, you can look right in there, especially. So be cautious about saying, hey, um, let's do farming in one area or even buying products from some areas. Um, you can see Jamaica actually being very good here and Puerto Rico as well. Um, but um, it's just a question of you know, one, one of the problems here is to maybe think about these islands. So basically these are starting to be, Jamaica is very populated, same with uh, Puerto Rico and even uh, Haiti and Dominican, most of the population is actually centered around there. So these islands actually are becoming very vital to some of the smaller, you can see the really small specks in here. Maybe we should keep those 100% wildlife. So just, uh, you know, and then I have a friend down in Trinidad right here, right off the coast of Venezuela. You know, they're basically really populated in Port of Spain here, Tobago, maybe even keep all of Tobago as a nature preserve. So, um, but this, cause this gets really hurricane-y anyway. So a lot of people have traditionally not lived uh, on this side here. This is the windward, called the windward islands. Um, you can see Bermuda as well. So there's a lot of fishing and just uh, problems. We'll look at that in a second. So, so there's just so many topics. Um, and I'm really sorry if you're struggling with food right now. Um, you know, this is a very important topic and I'm trying my best to um, look at the situation for food for everybody. So um, we're going to see what we can do to get the food situation sorted out. So, and it starts um, with some complicated stuff sometimes, but let's try to keep it simple too. Um, you know, just plant some food and um, work with the farmers. So, so from that perspective, what I would really mention is that, um, you know, find a farm uh, that we can work with and go to this global map and find the nearest farm near you. And uh, I'm already kind of friends with the farmers in my town. I'm trying my best to just drove past our farm yesterday, actually. Uh, I was going to try to pull over. My friend was a little bit stressed and we said he didn't want to stop at the farm, but I was trying to get him to stop at the farm. Um, but uh, there's just so many different farms here. So definitely try to find an area near you that you can make friends with the farmer um, and uh, you know visit the farm. We're actually trying to set up some farming tours. Um, so here's another map of the situation. So this is a legend here. I'm gonna just drop that, so, but I'll explain to you what's going on. So this air, this color here is a farmland for the most part. You can see it doesn't really explain Haiti very well, but a lot of forest in here as well. So you can see Yucatan Peninsula, and this is actually a very big question right now because uh, it might turn all to farmland and actually maybe trade farmland with, you know, rehabitat get this back to jungle some areas um, and maybe just uh, rethink about the Yucatan carefully uh, what's going on so you can see some uh, there's actually quite an interesting story if you're interested in reading some of the history of farming in Central America there's a lot of little coastal towns some of them have been completely abandoned but still very nice like you will notice this in Panama that 
Panama City is on one side, but then there's another city on the opposite side that's almost been completely abandoned. You can have free housing almost in some of these abandoned port towns, and it's unbelievable. So they're just, they used to be huge towns, and now they're no longer um, because some of the some of the shifting in uh, industry in terms of ports. So I would love to read more about that, but on this map, you can kind of see the complexity. So there's certain ports here, 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 a lot of little ports in here. Like looks like this guy is really important down in Belize. Uh, you can see down in Texas, Houston, and so on. So you might want to look at that as a way to understand where the shipping is going and farming, and you can do this all over the world. Let me pause this for a second. So I just wanted to zoom out a minute so you can look at this graph for the whole entire Earth. So you can see the Caribbean right in here, right? You have fishing vessels, and you can kind of see, ah, oh, man, this is getting bad, right? Even here, there's one concern is that why isn't there fishing off the coast of America? Well, they maybe outfished it. Um, Caribbean, um, you can kind of see some fishing vessels here down in South America, but man, what happened? I don't know. So you see there's a lot of fishing going on up in Iceland, and they're basically pushing it really far north, even to the North Pole there. So you can see maybe there's some very significant problems in fishing. So you can see they're kind of fishing out in the Pacific Ocean there man are they just gonna wipe out all the fish so that's scary um africa also is a is a concern i've seen quite a lot of fishing going on um you know along the coast here so but uh and definitely down in argentina that's getting very scary so um but let's go back to the specifics here you can kind of see some more details um as we zoom in so a lot of fishing down in galapagos and that should be a national park i don't know what's going on there so uh, certainly a discussion on the farming side. Uh, I want to load this climate map really quick again so you can see the global picture. So no matter where you are, um, a friend of mine might be listening in from Africa right now, um, but you can see this blue area is actually quite good for farming. So there's really some question about why Africa doesn't have better, like pretty much the best farming in the world, right? So there's you got to kind of take out this whole chunk for the jungle. Definitely, I, I don't approve of farming in the jungle, but um, there's quite a lot of region even here in East Africa that should be, I mean, our best farmland in the United States is probably in California, um, in the south, Midwest, along uh, Mississippi River here, and maybe in Florida. So if the best stuff that we got is down near Florida and California, man, this should be really good farmland. Um, but there's also the question of disease malaria um, and other things and definitely in uh, the Caribbean you know this is uh, pretty good farmland um, and uh, very but it's almost too warm so you got to realize I've been in Florida and oftentimes when I call my friends up they don't have shirts on or anything it's kind of funny um, we talk uh, over the internet sometimes and uh, it's really great it's just a totally different lifestyle um, you know you're near the beach or the ocean um, and uh, you know very hot so it's florida was way too hot for me sometimes and man it gets even hotter near the equator here so this is the equator actually runs right through here so that's hot so uh again that's something to think about um you need the temperature but uh, man it gets hot so mexico kind of being uh, really hot too but um you know anyway so let's go back and look at this farmland map again so i'm gonna move this off um so Again, uh, this is the critical map that we're trying to look at. So I wanted to look at the population map really carefully here, kind of see what's going on. So actually Haiti and Dominican Republic, as we were talking about, is actually quite populated. Puerto Rico, you can see uh, Cuba actually being pretty spread out, but then there's a, quite a speck there in uh, Havana. I've been down to Guatemala and there's definitely a lot of people. I was really surprised how many people are in this region. Mexico is a, definitely getting to be a lot of people. Guadalajara, you can see Mexico City and then some of the coastal towns. And actually, the farming towns don't really have a whole lot of people. Um, there is some farming up in here. And remember, we saw that big chunk here. Yucatan actually having some options for farming in Cancun, some other areas. So uh, population map is interesting to look at. You can see the Windward Islands. Here's Trinidad and Tobago. So you got all this area in here. Um, which is pretty interesting. So um, don't underestimate uh, an area that you're particularly interested in. There's so many different cities. I'm sorry, 
um, you know, like wherever you are in the world is a pretty interesting spot to start with. Um, I'm still trying to learn about the farming in my town. So, um, but uh, I wanted to show these rain maps. Um, you can see uh, that actually there is uh, some dryness, uh, which you might not expect. So we're gonna go through December. We're gonna start January here, right? Um, I've been doing this for all of the world. So you can see sometimes people have difficulty doing this. So I'm gonna try to do it for help people out. You can see here is March. You're starting to get into the uh, spring and the rain is starting to come in. So you can see right in here, Dominican Republic and Haiti getting some of that rain. Um, now you start to get really rainy in May. So this is part that I was talking about. This is actually the most rainy spot on the planet. And I've been looking at all the data. So that's something to think about with maybe not to farm there because give that to natural habitat that's just a natural park so i don't even want to talk about it too much but you can see some of the rain coming in here in june and then july um being pretty good now now you're starting to get into the hurricane season and you see some of these windward islands which you can't actually see the details on but you can start to see some of this rain now let's not underestimate this little spot in mexico so i'm gonna actually move the map a little bit so we can see and i'm really sorry about that you'll have to try to go through some of this more detail here september october um and man do not underestimate this rain stuff because we have to have water every day sometimes for the plants um, if you've tried to take care of plants before um, so um, and uh, even the time of day is important so I wanted to stress you don't want to water them necessarily so the leaves burn off you got to be careful so I'm gonna go through these months again because we missed this whole area so this is extremely dry part of Mexico you can see absolutely no rain there at all so this is a monthly long-term average so you may want to add some other maps to this and uh, I'll just do that really quick so you can see it. So there is a uh, three month, five kilometer. I wish they had even more details. So this is anomaly global month. I think this is what we want here. So this is going to load up and I'm going to turn this one off. So yeah. So the nice part about this map um, is that it shows you specific days. So here we can start to see exactly what the rain so the rain map is actually quite a bit different than we're actually getting more rain in some areas than what the monthly average was right and here we're actually getting less rain in some areas right so we're starting to see some of the problems and uh, areas so but definitely look at both of these maps. Uh, you can change the opacity and some other things on that. Uh, I wanted to look at the earthquake map just because it's so interesting to see Puerto Rico just being hammered with earthquakes. If I zoom out, you can start to see California, but it's a very unusual amount of earthquakes right there. And actually even Mexico, coast of Mexico, this is the fault line that goes all the way up to California. This is the most, one of the most important fault lines on earth see another fault line look at how deep that is right along jamaica and then coming through here and then kind of spinning around back into venezuela so super interesting map you can zoom in and see the earthquakes um i think i have some other friends maybe listening into this so you can see We're talking about the spirituality of the planet um sometimes where you listen to the earth it's actually surprising how few earthquakes africa gets but as you get over here into uh, Southeast Asia, you get a lot of earthquakes as well. So this is being very interesting. So sorry to distract you from the Caribbean, but there's a lot to look at. So let's just look at this here. So you can see kind of on the south part of the island, um, I will zoom in. So this could be a very interesting area to learn from the earth. Uh, if you're farming right in this area here, you might want to be careful even to have a roof over your head man there could be a big earthquake in here someday so here's a general map of the caribbean without all that other stuff so you can start to see where um some of these uh questions are in terms of you know farming so you can see nicaragua actually might be a lot of farmland there even as much as all of mexico so got this cool little lake there a lot of little details that were hard to see i wanted to download this map i'm not gonna do it but uh, there's a lot more data to look at. So 
I'm sorry, I'm kind of uh, trying to go through this as quickly as possible because I want to get to uh, some real health problems. Um, but let me pause this and just think about it and pray for a second here. So again, I hope this has really helped you understand um, no matter what your situation is, if you're really looking for food, um, I'd like to try to personally work with you, see what the problem is, where you're at, and get food to your situation immediately. So um, we can try to figure out where the farms are. We can look at um, all the information and make some friends and figure out what's going on. So um, this is Central America, a very important piece of what's going on. So. I am really sorry I haven't been able to, I'd like to try to discuss more of the spirituality of what's going on. Um, we're just such in need of just food that it's hard to talk about abstract ideas, um, but certainly um, it's worthwhile thinking about. Um, if you're trying to farm somewhere, think about the earth, man. Listen to the wind and rain and animals. Um, I spent, uh, couple hours hours yesterday uh, sitting in the area in the park and trying to talk with the birds it can be very interesting to listen to them and watch them try to get food and think about what their struggle is because man it's a whole situation it's not just people that need food we got overfishing we got you know a lot of things um I'm really sorry to have to do this, but we're going to look at this really carefully. I've been doing this on every single one because it's amazing what the problem is in terms of food. So uh, what I wanted to stress here is that the average person on earth is eating about four football fields or like say, you know, this middle part looks right in here. Let's say three and a half or four. That's a lot of food. If you look at this as a football field. You have to have four of those just to feed you. That's amazing, right? And in some areas, like in Africa, right, they're actually doing quite good. They're being very humble and very nice about what they're eating and consuming. And, you know, they're basically using about one or even two uh, football fields, right? So that's still a lot of land. So someone, so, so the good news is that we're really working on helping each other. You know, when you're a farmer, you're typically helping hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of people. Um, with your farm and um, so um, that's one of the awesome things um, so uh, so I'm gonna try to <clears throat> end this conversation with the river discussion so rivers are extremely important um, I'm gonna try to zoom out so basically you know if you can't have water you're not so there's not only is there a soil question but you have to have a river and um, more water. So uh, you got to water those plants pretty much every day. So looking at the global river situation is n just unbelievably important, right? Um, making sure that when you work on your farm or who, you know, trying to get people. And, and the scary part is that wildlife depends on this. And I was looking at some situations where, you know, we basically farmed out the entire river you know like columbia river for instance there's just farms all up and down the columbia river out here out west um, and this is pretty much the case in iraq all around europe i mean where do animals get water so i mean we don't really have animals like we used to have so it's kind of scary uh, i don't even i would love to go into more details and discuss what's going on in africa um and particularly in india that it's like there's i mean there used to be lots of wildlife there and I don't know what happened so basically um it's all farmland now um right so we got to be cautious about the rivers particularly and um you know about uh, two-thirds of the way up the river we better start thinking about making that into wildlife um you know if we're going to take up two-thirds of the river why not at least give the, the animals one-third of the river or even half right come on so um you know in central america um there are some rivers, and I'm sorry this map is loading kind of slowly, but um, you kind of see the situation in detail. Um, but um, for sure, take a look at those rivers um, as you are studying this. So um, the soil map was actually very important um, as I was looking at farming. Um, so definitely take a look at the soil map. Um, and this kind of um, helped me understand the big picture is the climate map, right? So you can load this up into Google Earth and get the three-dimensional view. Um, and you can start to do multiple maps on this and see what's going on.
So I wanted to close on a very practical note. Man, again, let's go back to the topic of if you personally need help um, or you want to work on trying to find a farm to work with. Man, I really want to work with you. Um, if you need help, it means that I have something to learn from you uh, in particular. So I'd love to try to work with you on finding what the situation is and how we can get food um, and better food. Um, and. Uh, you know, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat, um, but I'm very interested in trying to uh, help out as much as possible. So please let me know uh, what your situation is. Um, and I definitely have learned a lot from trying to help other people. Um, and uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to try to look at the farming situation. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Please let me know what's going on. I'd be glad to try to help out. See you later.